Hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about interferons in details. In my earlier video, I have described interferons in, in a short and concise manner. But in this video, I would in details de uh, describe the discovery of interferons, subdivision of interferon classes, interferon signaling, and also the medical usage of interferons. Now, as the name suggests, interfer interferon means to interfere with something and we would look at what it is interfering. Now, if you go back to 1950s, then Yushi Ichi Nonago and Dr. Kojima, who are Japanese virologists, were trying to develop a vaccine for smallpox. They are using rabbit skin and testis tissue to get the cell cultures. So they are culturing rabbit skin and testis samples. In the cultured sample, when they inject the small, uh, the smallpox or the cowpox virus, the cells are getting affected. But they did a se several different trick in which they injected a cell with a UV attenuated cowpox virus, and they saw once they uh, and after that, once they infected the cell line again with a normal virus, which is not heat attenuated, then they saw the infection that was produced was not spreading throughout the cells. So the infection was very local. Later, in vivo experiment in rabbits also suggest that when rabbits were immunized with a cowpox uh, virus on the skin, so first the infection spread but if they are injected with a heat killed or a UV attenuated virus, then the infection doesn't spread that much while once it is while it is infected for the second time, the infection doesn't spread that much. That means in response to that UV attenuated or heat kill virus, there is something produced inside the body of this rabbit that is kind of a so-called viral inhibitory factor that is preventing the viral infection to spread while the when the organism is infected for the second time. So what was this viral inf inhibitory factor? So these two scientists with serial experiments have shown that the nature of this viral inhibitory factor was clearly not antibody. But most of their research paper were either in Japanese or in French. So this kind of excitement in the field was suppressed for a long time. Then another group of scientists, uh, Alec Isaac and Dr. Lindemann, were growing influenza viruses in chicken egg. And in the chicken egg, there is chorioallantoic membrane where people normally inject the virus to grow them. And this kind of technique is still used till date to culture viruses. So they were injecting viruses into that. But when they inject the chorioallantoic membrane with a UV attenuated viruses, they have seen the virus doesn't grow that much at all when it's again uh, injected with a normal virus. So that means something is produced in response to a UV attenuated virus and that is checking the growth of no normal growth of virus. And since they are interfering with the growth process of virus, they named this as interferons. From that time, it was known as interferons. Now, interferons were produced at very low, con low amount and they work in very low concentration as well. So the problem was, since not much amount of interferon was could be extracted, so the structural details or how they function it was not totally known because there was too less amount. In 1978, when biochemical methods uh, grows and biochemical there was an advancement in biochemical methods, then X-ray crystallographic structure of interferon gamma could be revealed. And that revealed a lot of structural and functional details and shed a lot of light about how interferon functions. Now interferons are one of the family member of the six cytokine families. 
So interferon family is subdivided into three subfamilies, interferon class 1, class 2, and class 3 interferon. Interferon class 1 consists mainly interferon alpha and gamma beta, whereas class 2 interferons comprise of interferon gamma and interleukin 10, whereas inter newly discovered interferon lambda, which is discovered in 2003, is the prevalent family member of interferon class 3 subfamily. Now, interferon alpha and beta are secreted by dendritic cell or macrophages in response to pathogen invasion. Let's say here is a pathogen invasion and the dendritic cell, which are like patrolling police officers, send out an alarming signal. This alarming signal here is interferon alpha or interferon beta, as if the dendritic cell is asking for backup towards its fellow mate, just like this police officer is asking for a backup. So dendritic cell secrete a lot of these interferons around and this attracts more uh, dendritic cells or macrophages near the site of action. So that would help the immune system to boost its response. Also interferon alpha and interferon beta bias the formation of, bias the differentiation of the T cell towards a Th1 fit and Th1 helper cells, Th1, Th1 CD4 helper cells are mostly uh, well known for their inflammatory roles and thereby they, uh, they do a lot of uh, inflammatory, so they also synthesize many inflammatory mediators. Now interferon class 2 family member, that means interferon gamma has a huge antiviral role and we would discuss about it. Let's say this yellow cell is infected by a virus. Now what after, after infection what would happen? The virus would give its internal genetic material whether RNA or DNA inside the host cell and using the host cell protein machinery it would produce a viral proteins. Now viral proteins would be normally degraded by the degradation machinery of the cell which is proteasome and the viral protein, some of the viral proteins would be loaded onto the class 1 MHC in the ER. After that, it would be displayed on the cell surface. Once it is displayed on the cell surface, there are patrolling CD8 positive cytotoxic killer cells, which are like specialized killers. So they would recognize the viral peptide on class 1 MHC and they would kind of engage with that cell and secrete a lot of granzymes and porphyrins and ultimately secreted granzyme and porphyrin would induce apoptosis in that targeted cell. Now the targeted cell is dead but its role is not over. The targeted cell produces something which is actually interferon gamma and that binds to nearby cell. It works like an alarming signal for their neighbors. So the interferon secreted by the dead cell, the cell which was about to die, binds to the interferon receptor on the nearby cell and it gives rise to specific signaling which ultimately produce antiviral mechanisms which can combat virus infection. Now these interferon uh, receptors are basically tyrosine kinase receptors. So these are bound to genus kinase or JAKs. So once interferon binds to it, JAK gets phosphorylated. Also, it phosphorylates STAT. In this example, this green interferon is the green interferon signaling is mediated by STAT1 and STAT2. Phosphorylated STAT1 and STAT2 dimerize and the dimerize stat1 and stat2 stat means signal transduction and transcription so stat1 migrates to the nucleus and binds to specific binding region where it would give rise to a specific set of genes here the yellow interferon which is a different interferon give rise to interferon signaling but might use different combination of stats and then give rise to several other genes which are transduced. 
This is how the uniqueness of the si signaling could be maintained. Now the common targets that the stat is giving rise, we would look at it, but stat could give rise to first proliferatory molecules like BCL2, like CMIC, like cyclin D, etc. Also, here is a list given that what combination of jacks and what combination of stats are used by several cytokine and cytokine receptors. Now, the cytokine signaling, the interferon signaling, give rise to specific antiviral proteins. We would look at it, look at them. One is protein kinase R. Protein kinase R would sequester viral dsRNA and kind of interfere with the process of their viral assembly. Now, that means also it is inhibiting the viral translation, translation of the viral dsRNA. Also, PKR is a kinase, so it can phosphorylate uh, initiation factor 2 alpha, which indirectly inhibition inhibit the translation. Also, interferon signaling can produce 2,5-oligo-A synthase. Now, 2,5-oligo-A synthase can bind to specific viral genetic material and it can allow it mark it for destruction by RNA's L family proteins. Another uh, important molecule that is produced by interferon signaling is MX protein. MX protein polymerize and also inhibit viral assembly. So these are few strategy used by the downstream signaling uh, of interferon and this is how a neighboring cell which is not viral in, in, infected it's preparing itself for the viral uh, combat when once it gets the alarming signal from its neighbor. Now interferon has certain medical usage as well. Interferon is used to treat certain viral diseases like hepatitis C. Speci specifically, interferon alpha is used for this treatment. Autoimmune disease such as rheumatoid arthritis could be treated using interferon therapy. Also, multiple sclerosis could be treated by interferon beta. Other cases of several cancers and several variety of myeloma and some renal cell uh, carcinoma could be treated by interferons. So that kind of concludes my video on interferons. If you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. And thank you.